Hey, Danny. What do you know about orcs? The fungal monstrosity is that only live for warfare and conflict? No, no. What they're named after. Orcs sprouting from the word Orkneus of the Old English language meaning monster, which sprouts from the Latin word Orcus meaning hell. The word was manipulated in fantasy, often assumed to be started from Tolkien's Lord of the Rings to describe monstrous creatures from the deep who live for blood and war. What do you know about the creatures you named your greenskins after? Tolkien? You mean Tolkien? The ancient writer of the myth of Gollum, Lord of Rings? I really hate that you know that stupid AI apology, but the orcs were originally meant to be spirits, a sense of evil, a monster with a desire for doing evil and nothing else. But in modern settings, they're more of a bog standard and enemy in various games, from tabletop games to video games to even more like movies and books. Hell, Orcs are pig-like monsters in Dragon Quest series, being based off the word pork. In fact, you spell it that way too. Orc has a K, and we'll be talking about another game that has Orc spelled that way, from a company I really like actually, Green Ronin's Orc the role-playing game. Now, Green Ronin has actually talked to me about how to make my company, and I really appreciate them. I reviewed their game, Mutants and Masterminds, about a year ago, and I loved it. So, I admit I have a high expectations of this game. Now, Orc has two editions. I saw the book at my local game store's shelves a few years ago before I started reviewing these games, but it got bought right before I could get the cash for it. I haven't seen another copy of this book since then, but I remember the name of it, which still made it difficult given the spelling. Until I found out Green Ronin published it, which made it easy to find. I bought the PDF on their website actually for about 17 US dollars. Now, what's this game about? Well, look at the title. It's obvious. What do you think it's about, really? This is not a game to take seriously. This is a comedy game. You're meant to have fun with it and laugh. And you should go into this game like you go into a drunken bear fighter, expecting to laugh and intending to be funny. Let's talk about how this game works, because it's a weird mix of an evolving dice system and a dice pool system, which I admit I love. I like games that are dice pools and I adore evolving dice systems. So this combines two things I enjoy into one. The skill checks will be an opposed system, the player will roll against another player or the orc master or game master, who uses what's called chrome dice. We'll get into that later. Now I should start this out by pointing out a few things. This is not a long book, but it feels longer than it really needs to be. The pages are not large pages like how Paizo or Wizards print their books, but the font size is the same. There's also absolutely beautiful artwork that gives me smiles because of how silly but fitting they are to the game. There's also a lot of chapters explaining the setting and how orcs in this setting works, but in all honesty, that bit is not really necessary because this is meant to be a silly bit of fun. There are seven steps to creating a character and they are as follows. Pick a name, maybe. Assign attributes. Pick skills. Calculate wounds. Pick a cheat. Pick equipment. Kill squishy men. Those are quotes from the rule book, so let's explain some of these. Step one, pick a name, maybe. There's actually a chapter explaining how this works, chapter eight, growing up orc. There's something about a naming song here, but the book says that's not necessary. Hell, some GMs may not even care about names. 
Step two is assign attributes. There's four of them. Meat, which is your muscles, bones, which is your toughness, twitch, which is your agility, and mojo, which is your personality and magic capabilities. Each of these you'll assign to a die size, bigger is better, but there are certain combos of what dice you can use. The GM may tell you which to use, or you can argue with one another about who gets which combo. There's eight different combos, here's the list. It even makes jokes about the combos too. Now we get to pick skills. Each attribute has three skills, and you'll have six points to spend into them for each attribute. At character creation, no skill can be greater than three or less than one. Now, the skill rank is how many attributes dice you can roll. So, say you have three and one skill, and the attribute is a d6. You'll roll 3d6 every time you use that skill. But what are the skills? Well, they got odd names, so let's talk about them. Meat skills are fight, which are your close quarter combats, jock, which is your athletic skills, and might, which is essentially a power. So fight is hitting and might will be damaging or lifting, I think. Bones has Endure, which can apply to just survival type skills. Patch, which is essentially your first aid. And Resist, which is to shrug off poisons and alcohols and the fun mushrooms that are in the forest. Twitch has Aim, which should be obvious. Duck, which is not quacking, unfortunately, but dodges and stealth. And loot, which is anything that requires dexterous like grabbing things, like you're in a saw trap. Mojo has boss, which is your ability to intimidate or persuade. Though you're an orc, you shouldn't be persuading anyone of anything. Kenning, which is your ability to notice things. And magic, which is actually just your ability to use magic items and such. Now... With that out of the way, let's get to step 4, calculate wounds. This is a simple equation. Take 10, add the meat die type, and add the bones die type. So, say you got a d6 and a d8 in each. That'd be 10 plus 6 plus 8, which means you'd have 24 wounds. Simple enough. Now we get into step 5, pick a cheat. These are like feats in D&D or Pathfinder, but they're custom made by the player who picks one. Now, this is another chapter, which explains them further. This has four sub-steps, so let's get into that. Step one is pick a skill. You do exactly what it says. You pick one skill in one attribute. In this example, let's pick what the book picks. Fight. Pick that one thing is step two. This means specify it. So, with the fight skill, I can pick a weapon type. I'll choose axes. Now, this needs to be really specific. If you choose endure, it won't work on, quote, being hurt, but it would work on, quote, being on fire. So we've got fighting with an axe. Step three is make it unique. What does this mean? Uh, I'll be honest, I really ain't got a clue. I suppose give it some flavor? Hmm. Now, step four, which is optional, is change it. If it doesn't come up in-game at all, don't be afraid to trade it with something else that might come up again. I mean, it is a cheat, so fuck it, keep on trucking. There's another few paragraphs on how cheats work, but I'll get into them when I talk about Chrom Dice. Now we're at step six of character creation. Pick equipment. There's four starting outfits, which I'll put here. You have to steal everything after character creation, but these are considered the fine to start with selections. But you also get a dagger, some clothes, and a bag of rocks, twigs, and snacks. Because snacks are important, Danny. 
I can debate that. No, you can't, don't try. And step seven is kill squishy men with an exclamation mark. What does this mean? It means you start with one orc point that you can use to re-roll and do special shits. What special shits? Ask your GM and pray he says yes. When do you get points? Same answer. Now we talk about the Krom dice. Krom is the creator of the world who is above the GM. He sets the difficulty for everything and everything the GM rolls. They use his dice. Here's a chart of how difficulty works. Now, when you use a cheat, you gain some extra dice from Krom, and you can roll them with your skills in question. But if you use cheats, Krom can use them against you too. This is a fun little risk versus reward system in place. Now time for the score. This is an easy to get into game, easy to play game, with a fun world that isn't necessary to learn, but because of the name it's hard to find. Because of the simplicity and customization, it's easy to convince anyone to join. It needs a surprising amount to play with though, but a local game store has plenty of all the dice you need, but it still be a pretty good price and a half to get that many dice. The game is old so it's pretty cheap to get the books, especially if you get the PDF version like I did. All in all, I give this game an 82%. The problems are pretty minor, but the fun factor of the game has made me give me it a bonus score. Now, Danny. I need you to get me a bunker because I'm about to bitch about the lion, so shove off. <laughs>